Suspension systems with variable damping struts have been available on most Cadillac models since the late 1980s in several different forms. Understandably, this continuous evolution in electronic control dynamic suspension technology has created some confusion among Cadillac service technicians, mostly in the area of diagnostic testing. It's not hard to understand how variable damping suspension systems work, and essentially, they can all be affected by the same or very similar diagnostic conditions, some of which will be discussed in this presentation. The most significant differences are in the range and types of inputs used to control the system and diagnostic test procedures. Originally, speed-dependent damping was incorporated into Alante's suspensions on 1989 models with the 4.5-liter powertrain. This original base system regulated the amount of stiffness in the struts based on the vehicle's speed and brake pedal inputs only. In 1991, speed-dependent damping was modified to incorporate a lift-dive signal from what was then called the ECM. That same model year saw the introduction of a new generation in suspension damping systems. Called Computer Command Ride, it was offered on 4.9-liter DeVille, Seville, and El Dorado models and incorporated the lateral Axel input along with the lift-dive signal and base system. Then, in 1993, came the third generation, which we call speed-sensitive suspension. It consists of the base system, along with the lift-dive signal and lateral XL, as well as variable-assist power steering controls, again based on vehicle speed. Variable-assist steering works by means of a pulse-width modulated solenoid valve in the steering rack which opens or closes an orifice to the power hydraulic system based on vehicle speed. At slow speeds, the system provides maximum power assist for parking and maneuvering at close quarters. At fast speeds, the system provides minimum power assist for control and stability. This latest feature, speed-sensitive steering, is what distinguishes speed-sensitive suspension from the earlier damping systems. Speed-sensitive suspension has speed-sensitive steering. Speed-dependent damping and computer command ride do not. As far as ride firmness or damping is concerned, however, all of these systems work basically the same. They all use struts with a variable orifice, which is how they adjust ride firmness. They all use a solid-state module to monitor the system status and operate electronic controls and they all store codes for diagnostic conditions that can affect the system. As you can see, Cadillac has simply added features here and there over the years and changed the name. Struts used in all of these suspension systems with variable damping contain a small DC stepper motor and variable resistant sensors. A stepper motor drives the orifice valve inside the strut to any one of three positions, firm, normal, or comfort. The size of the orifice inside the strut is what actually changes its damping rate. When the orifice is completely blocked, the ride is firm. When the orifice is narrow, allowing some fluid to bleed through, the ride quality is normal. When the orifice is wide open, the ride quality is set for comfort. It's the control module that drives the strut motors to their commanded positions and holds them there. Speed-sensitive suspension is true to its name in that it varies the ride firmness based on speed. When the car is standing still or rolling at speeds less than 5 miles per hour, the suspension is set for firm. From 5 to 40 miles per hour, it's in the comfort range. At 40 to 60 miles per hour, the ride firmness is in the normal range. At 60 and above, it's back in the firm range. Sensors inside each strut tell the control module what position the stepper motor valves are in, comfort, normal, or firm. Several inputs, such as the brake pedal circuit, a lift-dive signal from the PCM, and a lateral accelerometer also figure into the ride firmness equation, depending on the model and year.
The ECM or PCM will send a lift dive signal to the SSS control module if there are any sudden changes in engine and vehicle speed. For example, at wide open throttle, the damping system will go firm to keep the front end from lifting up. Hard braking maneuvers are likewise signaled through the brake pedal and lift dive inputs and the system will go firm to keep the car from nose diving. Lateral accelerometer switches close in a hard curve on models with computer command ride and speed sensitive suspension. The system responds by firming up the ride to prevent body roll. Because several different inputs are involved, it's possible for one input to call for the soft or comfort setting when another input calls for normal or firm. When it happens, the system will always firm up the ride for maximum stability and control. Speed sensitive suspension does not command each strut independently. For instance, it cannot signal the front struts independently of the rear struts or the left struts independently of the right struts, only all four at once. Each strut has three wires running to it, one to carry the drive signal, one for ground, and one for the feedback position signal. Although feedback contacts inside the motors have eight positions, they still correlate to the three strut motor drive ranges. Both the home position and position three leave the motor valve wide open in the comfort range. In the home position, the feedback signal to the control module is three volts. Outside of the home position, all three strut motor drive ranges, firm, normal, and comfort, are indicated by the same feedback signal, one volt. A blank or dead spot in between tells the control module that the strut motor is switching modes or positions. Control logic, programmed into the module, enables it to keep track of the strut motor mode by counting the number of dead spots it hits in between the home position and all the rest of them. Control modules are located in one place or another, depending on the model and year. Later models have it in the right side of the electronics bay. 4.9 liter DeVille's through 93 have it under the driver's seat beneath the carpet. Bear in mind that one and the same module controls both ride firmness and variable steering assist on 1993 or newer models with speed sensitive suspension. The module goes through a self-test each time the ignition key turns on, also turning on its error lamp for just about seven and a half seconds. In the reset mode, the error lamp stays off all the time. This is a signal that something is wrong with the control module. In error mode, the error lamp on the control module is off at vehicle speeds under 10 miles per hour and on at speeds over 10 miles per hour. And in its normal control mode, the module's error lamp will be lit as long as the vehicle speed is less than 10 miles per hour, turning off as soon as it gets over 10 miles per hour. This indicates that the system is okay. On DeVille's through 93, the CCR module has direct control of its error lamp on the IPC, turning it on when a problem is sensed. On Eldorados, Seville's, Alantes, and 94 and later DeVille's, an error is indicated with a driver warning message. This requires the suspension module to communicate with the display devices. On those vehicles, the electronic suspension systems control module must be able to communicate or handshake with the BCM or IPC depending on the model. The electronic suspension control module does this through an output circuit to the BCM or cluster. At roughly 15 miles per hour, the suspension module changes the output state from grounded to open for normal operation or from open to grounded if a code is stored. 1992 and 93 Seville and El Dorado, as well as 1994 DeVille electronic systems, allow the instrument cluster to display a diagnostic code, IO39, for the electronic suspension if something is wrong. On older DeVilles, the suspension module controls the warning lamp bulb directly without going through the cluster. 
Before we get into specific diagnostic conditions and test procedures, everyone needs to be reminded that speed-sensitive suspension is not the same thing as road-sensing suspension, also known as real-time damping and found on models with the North Star system. Road sensing suspension senses road and driving conditions too, but firms up the ride using damper valves in the shock absorbers and different control logic. RSS also has an accelerometer and a position sensor in each corner. The other systems we're considering, computer command ride and speed sensitive suspension, did not have all this. Road sensing suspension on North Star models also let you display RSS trouble codes through the onboard diagnostic system. Computer command ride and speed sensitive suspension don't go through the onboard diagnostic system at all. So it's important to know which system you're working with. It's important for the instrument panel cluster to know too. 93 Eldorados and Sevilles could have either one depending on the powertrain. The cluster has to be correctly programmed for speed-sensitive suspension if the car has the 4.9-liter powertrain or for road-sensing suspension if it's the 4.6-liter North Star powertrain. If the cluster is programmed incorrectly, the electronic suspension system won't work and neither will its diagnostic functions. Speaking of which, most customers may not even be able to tell when their electronic suspension damping system is not working normally. Why not? because that ride quality of firmness does not change all that dramatically. Again, why not? Because it's not supposed to. Customers may comment that the ride is too firm for a Cadillac. If you hear or read the phrase degraded ride quality, it refers to the ride being too firm. Only a few customers will ever comment that it's too soft. By and large, the only practical way you or customers will ever know that something is wrong with the suspension damping is through the telltale lamp or warning message. Low resistance in a strut motor is easily the most common condition that can affect the suspension damping system. Resistance across the motor is typically 32 ohms, plus or minus 5, although the spec is anywhere from 20 to 60 ohms. It's peculiar that if a strut has low resistance, it could set every code in the control module. You might think this is bad because at times it's easier to be misled by multiple codes. However, in this case, you might hope that the module does set multiple codes. That might actually make it easier because you can suspect low resistance in one of the struts and it's an easy thing to check too. We'll demonstrate that in a moment. High strut resistance can also set a diagnostic code. In either event, you'll have to replace the entire strut. The motors are not serviceable. Struts are expensive items too, so don't replace one without testing it first. Replacement struts may also have high resistance, at least initially out of the box. Film builds up on the motor contacts as a strut sits on the shelf, which can increase resistance as high as 200 to 250 ohms. The way to correct this condition is simply to cycle the strut for several minutes. That should remove the film, bring the resistance back down into spec, and make everything work. Incorrect feedback signals are easy for the control module to recognize because all four struts should always be in the same state at the same time. The same quad driver chip in the module operates or drives all four struts at the same time. If it detects something wrong with current flow over two ignition cycles, the module sets a code and lights either the telltale lamp or the in-op message on the cluster. Other typical diagnostic conditions affecting struts include normal wear and tear, leaks, and fatigue. Struts can wear out if they're driven long and hard enough. Water contamination can affect struts too, in combination with cold weather. A little ice inside the strut can prevent its motor and valve from functioning normally. Then there's our old friends, the wiring connectors. Whenever the module flags low strut resistance, check for water in the connectors too. 
service kits containing universal replacement connectors with a 16 to 18 inch pigtail for the wiring harness are available for all struts, all models, and model years. Your GM tool supplier also has jumper harnesses for the rear struts on some models. We mentioned earlier that the CCR module directly controls the telltale lamp on 1991 and 92 model DeVilles. On Eldorado and Seville models, the BCM, or cluster, looks for that handshaking signal from the CCR or SSS module. If the signal is not there when it's supposed to be, the cluster will flash the in-op message and set a code 39. All this indicates is that something is wrong with the suspension system. To get more specific, you have to go to the suspension system and flash out the codes. That's also why it's very important for the cluster on an Eldorado or Seville to know which module to look for. If it's programmed for the 4.9, it's going to look for that simple handshaking signal from the CCR or SSS module. If the cluster is programmed for the 4.6 Northstar powertrain, it's going to look for a digital serial data signal from the module. IPC Override 8 tells the cluster if the vehicle is equipped with computer command ride or speed sensitive suspension on one hand or road sensing suspension on the other hand. If Override 8 is set incorrectly, you'll always get a code 39 only because the cluster is looking for the wrong kind of signal. On Northstar models, IPC override 8 should be set for 8. On 4.9 liter powertrains through 1993, IPC override 8 should be set for 0. Be on the lookout whenever an Eldorado or Seville from that era has had the cluster exchanged and then comes in with a code 39 but no other suspension system codes. Make sure that IPC override 8 is set correctly. Typically, 0 on the 4.9s, 8 on North Stars. Always verify this using section 8C1 of the service manual. While we're on the subject, it's not a bad idea to check overrides 7, 8, 9, 10, and 11 whenever replacing a cluster on these models. Remanufactured clusters could come back from the service center programmed with the wrong values. In fact, this is the most common difficulty we have with reconditioned replacement clusters, displaying in-op messages only because the option overrides are not set correctly. Better yet, find out what the option override settings are before taking the cluster out of the car in the first place. That way, you'll know how it should be programmed when the replacement cluster comes in. Now, for the test procedures themselves. When the computer command ride or speed-sensitive suspension system sets a code, the diagnostic method is a little different from other onboard electronic systems. Any suspension system condition that occurs during two ignition cycles in a row lights up the service ride control lamp or the in-op message. In addition, any codes triggered by an accelerometer display immediately. Accelerometer codes are condition latched, meaning that the warning lamp or in-op message will go out if and when the condition goes away. The control module will still store a soft code. However, CCR and SSS codes cannot be displayed or retrieved through the onboard diagnostic system. There is no other digital readout or more specific diagnostic messages other than the in-op message or code 39. The control module runs continual self-tests every three minutes if a soft code is stored. Its error lamp comes on during these self-tests and goes off if the condition corrects itself. On hard faults, the error lamp is off at speeds under 10 miles per hour and on at speeds over 10 miles per hour. The only way to retrieve codes from the computer command ride or speed sensitive suspension system is to flash them out from the LED error lamp on the module or from the telltale light on the dash of 91 through 93 DeVilles. To flash out the codes, ground pin C at the diagnostic link connector or 
Connect a jumper wire from pin D2 to pin D16 at the control module connector. This will also ground the diagnostic request circuit. The error lamp will come on for seven and a half seconds, then start blinking out the codes. First, you'll see a code 12 flashed out three times, followed by a three second pause. Likewise, each diagnostic code flashes out three times with a three second pause in between. Nothing but code 12s means that no codes are stored or active. CCR or SSS codes will also flash out from the telltale lamp on 91 through 93 DeVille models with the 4.9 liter powertrain. Specific tests for specific codes are all contained in section 3G1 of the service manuals for each applicable model and year. Checking strut motor resistance is a quick, simple test that you should know how to perform if you're going to be working on these systems. Take care when undoing the connectors. Squeeze the tabs on the side, then lift straight up. Try not to open them any more than you absolutely have to. Every time someone cycles a connector, it can cause a slight amount of seal deterioration, and the tighter we can keep them, the better. Take a good close look inside the connector cavity. Is it clean and dry? Is the seal in the right place? Any sign of corrosion, moisture, or other junk? What about damage to the terminal pins or connector bodies? Do the connector halves mate properly? Now, with the ignition key off, measure across pins A and C, which are respectively the drive and ground leads, using your Fluke 87. You should read between 20 and 60 ohms. If resistance is any more or less, replace the strut. What to do about multiple codes? Yes, you might start with checking the resistance at all four strut motors, but here's another idea. Clear the codes, take the car for a drive, and see if only one code comes back. If so, run through the test tree for that one code as instructed in the service manual. But if it comes back with multiple codes, unplug the control module and check the resistance at each strut. If one strut has a low resistance, it may be the cause of all the codes and will require replacement. Connectors on the front struts are easily reached, although the rear strut connectors may play hard to get. Once you've removed this connector, you'll probably need needle probes on your test leads to check the resistance. It's also possible to take all four measurements at the control module harness connector, which isn't a bad place to start anyway. Some Cadillac service technicians prefer to buy a replacement pigtail connector and use it to check strut resistance, particularly the rear struts. This is okay. Just be careful not to cycle the connectors too much because of the seals wearing. For intermittent conditions, you can command each strut motor to spin for a short while and see if it makes a code set. Just apply a 6.6 K ohm resistor across the diagnostic request line to ground. This is explained in the first four pages of the service manual section. This will make all four strut motors cycle every two seconds. As long as it's quiet enough where you are in the shop, you'll be able to hear the motors cycling. We have amplified the sound of a motor cycling so that you'll know what to be listening for. The control module detects faults on individual strut motor circuits and stops cycling just that one until the circuit passes self-test. So let them go for about 20 minutes. If any one strut stops cycling by itself, it's got something wrong. Check out the circuits for continuity, check the strut resistance, and repair or replace whatever you find wrong. By the way, if you don't have any 6.6K ohm resistors lying about, you can also use a VATS interrogator, which is normally used to diagnose the passkey system. The settings for keys 12 or 13 are both close enough to 6.6K ohms to put the system in continuous strut cycling mode. To clear codes, ground the diagnostic request circuit for one second three times, either from pin C to pin A at the diagnostic link connector, 
or pin D2 and D16 at the control module connector. The error lamp will go out for one second, showing that codes have been cleared. Disconnecting the battery or the control module connector will not clear the codes. And now a word from our sponsor. Every year, Cadillac hears about an increasing number of customer comments having to do with creaks and groans, buzzing, whistling, and many other types of noises. Air conditioning noise, engine and transmission noise, chassis noise, and who knows what else. Is it because we're building noisier cars? On the contrary, the more we are able to suppress noises in general, the more prominent isolated chassis and powertrain noises become. The typical approach to diagnosing chassis noise is to disconnect or remove any component that was suspected of causing the noise and see if the noise goes away. It's a hit and miss approach to diagnosis, but it does work, even if it can take up a lot of your valuable time. But here's an alternative approach that you might consider, a special tool appropriately named chassis ears allows you to connect up to six acoustic sensors at one time to the same components that you might remove to isolate a noise. Lower control arms, the cradle, body parts, struts, stabilizer bars, as well as engine and powertrain components. Leave yourself a little slack in the wires when connecting to suspension parts to allow for normal movement. A good six inches ought to do it. Drive the car. Tuning in each sensor channel one at a time as you go along. If a sensor is placed close to a noisy component or body part, chassis ears will pick it up. As you localize the general area of a noise source, rearrange the leads to pin it down more precisely. Generally, you can get real close to the source in one or two trips out. Not only is the tool much better than randomly disassembling half the car, it's inexpensive besides. Ask your GM tool and equipment representative for more information. Cadillac hopes that this video program has been able to clear up some of the confusion about the computer command ride and speed sensitive suspension systems. You have to flash out codes the old fashioned way to diagnose these systems. Unlike road sensing suspension, they are not accessible via the onboard diagnostics. Strut motors with low resistance can cause multiple codes, and this fact can make it easy to diagnose the system. Initially, replacement struts may have high resistance, but it's easily corrected. Cycle the motors for a short while. It will clean the film off the motor contacts, and the system should work fine. Handshaking protocol between the suspension control module and the instrument panel cluster, or BCM, differs depending on the model year and powertrain. Older DeVilles from 1991 to 1993 had no handshaking feature at all. The control module controls the telltale lamp directly without going through the cluster. Newer DeVilles, Seville's, Eldorado's, and Alante's with the 4.9 liter powertrain have this handshaking system, which either grounds or opens a circuit from the suspension module to the IPC or BCM at 15 miles per hour. If the handshaking signal state is not correct, the cluster will display a diagnostic message to check the suspension system. Electronic handshaking is a reliable, high-level diagnostic. That means it's a reliable test of the diagnostic circuit, too. If you unplug the module and don't see the error lamp come on under 15 miles per hour, something is definitely wrong. The same is true if you short the diagnostic circuit to ground. If you don't get a light above 15 miles per hour, something is wrong. And don't forget your chassis ears. In the realm of noise diagnosis, they are an inexpensive time saver and an unsung hero. Anyway, definitely worth a try. Thank you.